Hey everyone, welcome to this Azure 360 and 360 to cover a certain technology in 360 seconds, so six minutes. And for this video, I want to cover managed identities. And this is all focused about the idea that I have some Azure-based compute resource, for example, in this case, we'll say a VM, but this could be an Azure Container instance, a Logic App, a Function, an App Service, whatever. And I want access to some other Azure resource, for example, a storage account. And ordinarily, we have a problem that, well, how does an application running inside this compute resource authenticate itself to that target resource so it can get access? How does it authenticate? I don't want to have to store a credential or a secret. I need something else. So I think about an analogy would be when I try and get in my building, I have to show a driver's license. That's something I have to keep, I have to carry with me. Same as it would have to carry a credential. What would be better is if I could use a biometric. It's just something I am. I don't have to store that anywhere. So what managed identity does is let's say this is VM1. We have Azure Active Directory. This is where we store the security principles that we use for the various role-based access control. So with Managed Identity, when I turn on a system assigned Managed Identity, that's a switch on the VM, it goes and creates a security principle for that compute resource, i.e. VM1. Now, on my target, I can give that security principle a role. I could say, hey, look, that VM1, that has blob reader, or anything else. So now, when I want to access that resource as this process, I go to a special endpoint to request a token. It knows who I am. It knows, hey, you are VM1. No one else can pretend to be VM1. So it gives me a token back for VM1, and I can then send that token to the target resource where I will get the role that was assigned to that managed identity, and then I can get the data back. So that's managed identity. It creates a security principle for my compute resource that no one else can act as when it's system assigned. And I can use that to authenticate and then be authorized for various sets of use. There is also something called a user assigned managed identity. System assigned is always one to one. Imagine I had multiple, a different color, imagine I had multiple resources in like a load balanced farm. Each of them was a container or a, a virtual machine, whatever. And they all need the same access to a certain set of resources. So rather than me manually creating a system assigned managed identity for each one of them, then having to manually configure the role for every single target resource for each identity, I can go ahead and create a user assigned managed identity, so UA ID1, whatever that is. And then I can say, hey, these compute resources are all allowed to act as that single shared user assigned managed identity, this UA ID1. So now any of these resources can make a request that endpoint saying, hey, I want a token for UA ID1. It checks, yes, this compute resource has been told it's allowed to act on behalf of the user assigned managed identity. And then it will get a token for that UAID1, and I would give UAID1 the various roles. So that's really all there is to it. System assigned, I flip a switch, it's a one to one. The managed identity lives with the same life cycle as the resource. User assigned, I can give access to many compute resources who can use that identity. So now I don't have to duplicate effort giving the same roles to lots of different system assigned managed identities. If these 10 virtual machines are part of a backend load balance set, I need to access the same SQL database, the same storage account. I just give them all access to the same user assigned managed identity. They can all get a token and I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and see this. 
So here in my subscription, I have a virtual machine. Under the identity, I have turned on my system assigned managed identity. Now I could also assign it a user assigned identity. If I click add, I'll see the user assigned ones I've created in advance that I could also assign and it could therefore request a token as. Now I have a storage account. If we look at the role assignment, you can see what I have here is under the storage blob data contributor. I have given that virtual machine via its system assigned managed identity rights to that role for this scope. In this case, the entire storage account could have been a container. How I did this, I did add role assignment. I selected the role and then under assign to, these are all the types of compute resource. I selected VM, then selected the virtual machine. Note, I also could have assigned it to a user assigned managed identity. So now that VM for process inside should be able to access it. Likewise here, you can see I've also under a key vault created an access policy for the same system assigned managed identity and given it rights to the secrets. To test the storage account, I will connect using the dash identity flag, which connects as the managed identity. I'll create a storage context. Right now I have an empty folder. I'm gonna try and grab a blob from that storage account that I gave the managed identity access to. That completed. And there's the proof, a picture of my dog eating McDonald's. Additionally, to test the key vault, I'm gonna make a request to that special endpoint that's the same for every compute resource. This time I'm actually just gonna get a token. Then I'll create a variable containing just the token and then try and read a secret from my key vault, my test secret. And there I can see the value. Showing that managed identity and the roles it was assigned works from within that particular compute resource. So I think I was just about in time. Um, please like, subscribe, share and comment. Till next time, take care.